Tesla Model S catches fire in Toronto Garage. You may ask yourself, what happened to it since? Now's the time to find out. All right, let's get to work. So you might ask what the bounty was at the end of all this destruction. Two backseat square bags, a DC converter, and a 12 volt battery. It's 2013. All right. What's up guys? So this is the battery that I spent about an hour taking out of that flooded car. So I'm just gonna test the voltage because I'm just too curious to see how many volts it's putting out. Maybe three or four volts or so. It's been sitting in a car, it's been on fire for about an hour. So I'm assuming this is pretty much dead. The manufacturing date of this battery is 2013. And that's interesting because I think the car is a 2014. Actually, no, it's a late 2013 model. So this very well could be the original battery. I'm not sure. So, wow, didn't see that one coming almost a full 12 volts. These things don't even last in a regular functioning car. Almost a full 12 volts. Wow, that's amazing. I'll be keeping this battery and I'm gonna put it on a trickle charger, uh, charge it up to its full voltage and uh, see where it goes from there. So awesome, got a new battery. Thought I had to trash it for a minute. Uh, driver's side seat belt that a customer wanted. And um, the interesting thing about this puzzle is that you just can't solve it. Check this out. So that can't fit in there. This definitely can't fit through there. How do you get it out? It's almost like this was assembled when someone slid the belt through and then attached it to this. So uh, I'm not going to ship this entire part with it because the guy will probably not need it. So let's take it apart. Okay, so this should fit through here. Oh, there you go. Fits through there fine. Get this out of there. 
Awesome. There you go. So I'm gonna toss this only because it has some pulling here and here and here and a small hole here. Otherwise, I would just keep this and paint it because I actually painted the pillars in my car and they came out perfectly. But this one, it's not very good. I'm just gonna toss it. Um, I was gonna get cute and cut this off as well. The new owner may actually need this. So I'll be a nice guy. Maybe he could clean it up and, uh, and do it that way. And actually, what I ended up doing was I actually ended up cutting a small slit right here and snaking the seat belt through because I wanted a new one of these. So really the new owner could do that as well. You know, it's not a big deal. Uh, and once this is hanging up in the car, it's gonna look something like this. So it'll be hidden anyways, if there was a slit here. So yeah, this is it. This is the, uh, the seat belt mechanism. Um, there are two igniters in here. There's an igniter here, and there's an igniter here as well. These are two components to the, uh, the seat belt mechanism. And I believe, I could be wrong here, but once the signal is sent to this one, it pulls the actual uh, buckle portion tighter. And then once the explosion occurs here, it actually locks the seat belt in place. So I think there's two motions that happen at the same time. This gets pulled tighter and this locks as well. So you're not going anywhere. Uh, I could be wrong, but uh, if you know better than I do, uh, just shoot it in the comments and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. And also when shipping these, remember, these have to be shipped with a hazmat sticker because there's explosives in both of these devices right here. So uh, that's it for the seatbelt. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe. If you have anything you would like to see, please leave comments.